But right now, there is a, certainly there is a hold on uh, future flights until we get ourselves established and understand um, the root cause to this disaster. My name is Jenny Blankenship. I'm a reporter with the CBS station in Austin. And um, I was wondering if, if you could explain to, to people who are not from this area really how tight-knit of a community this is, not just here on the NASA JSC campus, but all around here, how much of a, an integral part of the community this is to you all. Well, it's, it's more than a job. This, this is a passion for well, us. Human spaceflight is a passion. It's an emotional event. Uh, and when we work together, we work together as family members. Um, and, and we treat each other much that way. And whether it's the loss of a crew member or a loss of a member of our ground team or processing teams, it's a sad loss for us. And so we are a very close community. We understand the risks that are involved in human spaceflight. And we know that these risks are manageable, but we also know that they're serious and can have deadly consequences. And so we are bound together with the threat of disaster all the time. And we know we must count on each other to do what's right. We must count on the ground teams to process correctly. We must count on our suppliers to follow the procedures just like we have identified to them. And we count on the flight crew members to fly the vehicles within the specifications. So we all rely on each other to make each space flight successful. So we have a dependency. And it's a professional dependency and it's an emotional dependency. And so when we have an event like today, where we lose seven family members, it is devastating to us. Uh, and it's more than just us in this location. There, there is an emotional attachment to human space flight. It, it uh, piques our interest, it captures our imagination. Um, I received a couple of phone calls this morning, immediately following uh, immediately following the, uh, when it became apparent that Columbia was no longer going to land, one phone call was from my brother in Phoenix, Arizona, not associated with the space business. I haven't talked to him yet, I just received a message, certainly extending his thoughts and prayers. I received another phone call from my son in Provo, Utah with the same emotional outpouring of sadness. And I'm sure this is true across the country. We're seeing that from the public. We're seeing that as people that really care about the space program and understand what it means to this nation, reflect their thoughts, their prayers, their caring attitude to us. And, and we want them to know we appreciate it very much. As we struggle with our emotions in this difficult time, we appreciate the thoughts, the prayers, the care, and the support. Milt, you might have some thoughts also. Well, um, yeah, it, it is a, the community out here is, is extremely close-knit. Um, <clears throat> I've been through three of these. Um, and, and each time, uh, you see a coming together of other community here. Our landscape has changed. <clears throat> the space flight business today is not going to be, it's going to be much different than it was yesterday. It was different after the Apollo 1, it was different after Challenger. And it was different because this community, and the passion that Ron's right, the passion is here. And, and as Ron was talking, I was thinking about your question, and I thought, you know, sometimes it's a shame. Uh, that it takes things like this for this country to pull together and, and, and care. And, and it shouldn't. Damn, we're good. This country's great. It shouldn't take these kind of things to cause a coming together. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Eric Berger with the Houston Chronicle. Milt, you mentioned about eight sensors and one of those which triggered some kind of notification inside the, inside the shuttle. Um, can you tell us which sensor that was and whether it was an abnormal reading on whatever sensor it was or whether it was just that the sensor was no longer functioning? There were, <clears throat> in the left inboard and outboard, th these, are these are tire temperatures on the left-hand side, okay? Um, um, temps and pressures, and Ron, help me out here if I, if I, if I get that mixed up. Um, and, and they they all went, they all went what we call off scale low. In other words, there's a bottom number zero, or maybe not zero, not necessarily zero, but there's a bottom number of the measurement. They all just went off scale low, indicating um, loss of the measurement itself. You know, um, and and I cannot tell you specifically which one of the eight. Uh, we'll find that out, but I don't have that right now. No. An, e an easy way to think about that is the measurement was no longer reading. It was not yeah. giving an indication. It's, it's as if someone just cut the wire. Okay, right over here. Chris Heinbaugh with WFAA-TV in Dallas. Uh, you indicated that at 7.53 was the first, uh, you first lost some sensor uh, information, and you indicated towards the end, there was an acknowledgement from the crew. During the rest of that time period, was there any dialogue, any communication with the crew during that period? And was, if there was, was there any indication from them uh, that there was a problem uh, that they could see on board? Uh, at, yes, at 7.53 a.m., uh, we did have a, another set of um, four measurements uh, in the hydraulic system on the left-hand side that went off scale low. Now, this was reported by the um, uh, flight controller responsible for the mechanical and hydraulic systems in the orbit reported to the flight director. Um, w when this happens, then it's followed up by if there's any action to take, if there's anything that we see that needs to be done, that flight controller will tell the flight director and a crew and, and call might go to the crew. Uh, these were measurements that did not <clears throat> have, um, we, many, we have many measurements on board. Not all of them are enunciated to the crew. They don't need to be. Uh, and we see a lot more information on the ground than they do. So they did not, did not see this. So they had no indication. We saw nothing else to indicate any difficulty at all because had we seen anything else, we would have taken some action. That's, you know, we work, we work very hard. We train very hard to react in a very short amount of time to situations. Um, but we don't, if, if, if we don't have anything that we see that we've got to do, then we don't, we don't spend the time talking about it because we focus on the next event and so forth. Right here next, next time. I'm Brian Sasser, KPRC TV here in Houston. We had heard some reports that <clears throat> during launch there had been some concerns that some debris hit the wing. Uh, is that true and is that any cause of concern and that could have caused today's problems? Uh, it is true that uh, Right after launch, and I don't remember the time frame as far as the seconds, there was a, uh, a piece of foam that is used as insulation on the external tank in the area of what we call the uh, bipod, which is the forward attach uh, between the orbiter and the external tank. There is a piece of foam that, uh, that was shed, and in our review the following day of the launch films, we, we saw this piece of debris drop off, and uh, it, it looked to us like it impacted the orbiter uh, on the left wing. Where on the left wing, it, it's very difficult for us to tell. Uh, somewhere between the mid and outward span. Um, was it the leading edge? We don't know. Was it underneath the leading edge? We really don't know. To the best of our ability, that's what happened. We spent um, a goodly amount of time reviewing that film and then analyzing uh, what that potential impact of debris on the wing might 
might do and, and would there be any consequences. Uh, through analysis and through our ability uh, to, to call back on our experience with tile, uh, it, was, it was judged that uh, that event did not represent a safety concern. Um, and so uh, the technical community got together and across the country looked at it and, and judged that to be acceptable. And so as we, as we look at that now in hindsight, uh, that impact was on the left wing. Um, and certainly we have all the indications that Milt talked to you about were on the left wing. We can't discount, discount that there might be a connection.